when they left it, say, a half hour, 40 minutes ago. All right. There you see. Players are settling in here for match number two. Nikki Giannoulias, in case you've just joined us, defeated Jackie Sellers 235 to 214 in the opening game. She had to come from behind at one stage, trailed by 34 sticks after three frames. Big comeback. Great comeback, but it just shows us how determined Nikki is this week. And picking up right where she left off, Nikki Giannoulias, who threw nine strikes in the opening game, comes back and starts quickly here in game number two. That strike looked like it went, her, her shot looked like it went straighter up the lane. So I think she's opting to play the lanes with less hook tonight as opposed to last night when she did. And here's Renee. We'll get her another look at Renee, even though we saw her during her warm-up and practice. Pretty much an up and at a player, and Renee Fleming starts quickly with a strike on lane 16. Well, she knows that Nikki's already lined up, so she's got to match what Nikki's been doing. Very unusual type timing. Watch how long it takes Renee Fleming to get the ball into the swing. She actually double pushes it if you watch real, real closely. It's so small, you can hardly see it unless you're watching very closely for it. But she's also extremely strong. And if you watch the left hand, that goes down and doesn't have anything to do with her entire approach. Comes out and throws a pretty good shot on lane 15, leaves the solid 10. When you start the ball into the swing late, it has to finish late, which means you get to the line and you have to basically tug that thing through. And when you've got it going and got a little area, there's no problem. But uh, that's, I think, when she does go awry, and that's where the problem comes from. She says her timing is one of her biggest problems. So that that's the thing she works on the very most. And every player is different. You know, that heart rate's a little bit different in each one of us. Your arms and legs are longer and shorter, and it's, it's a difficult thing to find out what is the right tempo and timing for yourself and sometimes you have to experiment with whether you'd start with the ball high up around your head or at your waist or at shoulder length or below that. Uh, I think that's constantly players are always trying to get a feel for their timing. And some days it's different than other days. Not just like you're different uh, with a golf swing every single day. You get up and some nights you get more sleep than others. Uh, some nights you go out and have a little more fun than others, and you're going to swing a little slower <laughs> the next day. So you, you're right. I think in, in sports in general, you're always constantly trying to find that rhythm. What you want, though, also is the ability to change with the times. If, if you have one particular shot today, you hold the ball high, lower tomorrow if the, the lane calls for it. After the re-rack on 16, a perfect strike. Nikki Giannoulias is uh, zeroing in on the championship pair. I think she's found the line that she wants to play. And uh, when Nikki gets zoned in like this, look out below. She's going straighter up the boards, as you can see. She's, she's uh, not bellying the ball quite so much now. Well, the biggest difference, if you look at the ball at 55 feet uh, in game number one, she was on the 13 board at that point. Now she's at 15, and instead of swinging it all the way to like the two board at 33 feet, she's at the five board now. So you're right. Your assessment of tightening up the entire angle of play is what's giving her the success. And uh, right now she's just throttling the pocket. Well, when Nikki gets lined in, there's no stopping her. And, and uh, she's been looking for this for a while because she told me that she's always trying to improve her game. She's never satisfied with the way her game is, regardless of how successful she's been. She keeps trying to make it better and better and better. Could be one of the reasons why she's been such a force on the ladies' tour for so many years. I think you constantly have to adapt to the lane conditions, the pins, to your own game. Ball runs a little high, and a break for Renee Fleming, who trips out everything but the six pin. Well, Denny, I think right there we saw what you had pointed out just a little bit earlier. She went straighter up. She had to pull the ball into the shot a little bit more because the ball was further behind her. And when you do that and you have to pull the ball, sometimes you're not as accurate.
regardless of where Renee Fleming finishes here this evening. It's been a big week for her. It's been a very difficult year, not only physically, but also personally. She's had some personal turmoil that she's uh, been working out at home. She's real happy to say that it's all over and done with, and she wants to thank all of her friends that helped her through the hard time, Joyce, Luann, Jerry, everybody. And now she's bowling much better. She's got a clear head. She has a great sponsor, John Hesina, and he's been helping her out and put her through um, all these tournaments in 1990. Two-time champion on the LPBT Tour and a regular top 24 finalist. But when you get caught the other way, sometimes it's difficult. Well, she strikes in the fourth. And at this point in time, she trails by 21 to Nikki G, who is perfect through the first three frames. Hey, I'm... We were away, yet another excellent shot for Nikki G. When we see the ball hit the pins this time, we're going to watch that 10 pin stand there. But the big story is the messenger took it out. Not like the last time. Looked like the six pin was going to lay there, but over it went. Back to live action. The 300 game that might have been worth $100,000 ends after four frames. Well, at least you didn't mention the $100,000 any earlier and jinx her. So. No, I would never do that. Of course, oh, okay. the $100,000 paycheck would have been courtesy of our good friends at Kmart Corporation. But, uh, hey, we've still got two more games tonight. And the lanes are fairly nice. Yep. And Leanne Barrett knows how to strike, and so does Robin Romeo. Cross lane, no problem with the 10 for Nikki Giannullius, who leads by an even 30. Renee Fleming works on the strike here in the fourth. She needs to pick up the pace. Well, Renee's probably just getting her feel back for being on television. It's been a little while since she has made TV. She hasn't been on at all in 1990. Her overall uh, record on television, five wins and eight losses, as uh, Renee does a little maintenance work before she throws this shot. Normally, uh, Renee is very oblivious to anything going on around her, so I'm surprised she found something to do. It's interesting you mention that because uh, I was working down in uh, Dallas, I believe, is where she won her first title. I'm not sure. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. I it think was it was Garland Albuquerque. Oh, okay. Albuquerque. She did uh, not know that she had won the tournament. She yes. had gone up and thrown a final shot and uh, was kind of waiting to see what was going to happen, and uh, she indeed won the event. And she was the last to know as she doubles in the fifth. Well, the same thing happened to her when she won her second title in Virginia Beach a couple of years ago. She just gets so zoned in. And now we're watching Renee's game. You can see how strong she is here. She goes through the shot. She's got a good knee bend. She's a little over at the waist there. But it carried, so who are we to talk? Could cut the lead to 10 if she continues to strike here in the sixth. 